In this video, I'm going to talk about two exceptions to the ionization energy trend. The first exception that we're going to look at is beryllium and boron. Before we get started, let's just do a refresher on the ionization energy trend. The ionization energy trend, again, refers to the amount of energy that it takes to remove an electron from an atom. And we have seen that the ionization energy increases as we go up any column, and it also increases as we go from left to right across a row. So this tells us that as we go up a column, it takes more energy to remove an electron from an atom. And as we go from left to right, it takes more energy to remove an electron from an atom. We have two exceptions to this trend, and the first one that we're going to look at is beryllium versus boron. So let's actually go to the periodic table and find these two elements. Beryllium is right here, and boron is right here, so they're in the same row. And our expectation is that as we go from left to right across this row, the ionization energy goes up, it increases. So that means our expectation is that the ionization energy of boron would be greater than the ionization energy of beryllium because of the left to right trend. So let's make a note of that. Our expectation or our prediction is that the ionization energy of let's let's write them in order of left to right the ionization energy of beryllium is less than the ionization energy of boron let's flip back to the periodic table again so we're saying that the ionization of energy of beryllium is less than the ionization energy of boron because it the, the ionization in energy increases as we go from left to right. And more specifically, our scientific explanation for this is that effective nuclear charge increases as we go from left to right. And as ENC goes up, it's harder and harder to remove the electrons from an atom. Now, in reality, because this is an exception to the the trend, in actuality, the ionization energy of beryllium is actually greater than the ionization energy of boron. So let's try to understand this. To help us understand this, we're going to look at energy diagrams for the electrons in beryllium and also for the electrons in boron. We want to look specifically at the electron that is being removed in this ionization process. So let's go ahead and draw up a blank energy diagram. Maybe you would prefer to use a box diagram for this. We're just going to go all the way to the 2p orbitals for both of these atoms. And we're going to start by filling the electrons in for the atoms, beryllium and boron. Let's go back to the periodic table again and see how many electrons we're working with. Beryllium has four electrons and boron has five. So let's fill those electrons in for beryllium, one, two, three, four, and for boron, one, two, three, four, five. Now again, these are the energy diagrams for the electrons in the atoms. But in this ionization energy trend, we're specifically talking about turning these atoms into cations, giving up one of the electrons in the atom. So the atoms are becoming Be plus or B plus, and in the process, they're losing an electron. Which electron of these, which electron is the one that is being removed? In general, the first electron that gets removed from an atom is the last electron that you drew into the energy diagram. It is the electron that is the furthest away from the nucleus, a valence electron in the absolute highest energy level, furthest away. So for beryllium, the last electron that I drew is this one right here. Uh, and probably the same for you as well. I'm not going to erase that electron, but I'm just going to highlight it. So I'm just going to make it a different color. We can focus on that's the electron that's going to get removed when beryllium becomes an ion. What about for boron? The last electron that I, rem or that I drew for boron was right here, which means that that is going to be the electron that gets removed from boron when it ionizes. 
So again, let's go back to our data. What we see, what we expect is that it would be harder to remove this electron than to remove this electron. Our expectation is that the ionization energy of boron is really, really high, and the ionization energy of beryllium is a lesser number. Because we expect this to be high energy, that means we're expecting this electron to be harder to remove than this one. But what our data actually tells us is that this electron here is harder to remove harder to remove than this electron over here. So our data tells us that it's harder to remove this electron than to remove that electron. Now, if we think about this in terms of what we know about orbitals and all of the different rules that apply, like uh, Hund's rule and the Pauli exclusion principle and the Aufbau principle, this actually makes some sense. If we remove this electron right here, like I'm actually going to just go ahead and do it, what are we left with? We're left with an atom that has perfectly filled orbitals without any half-filled orbitals at all. So pulling that last electron out creates a situation in which boron is, is really in great shape. On the contrary, if we pull this electron away from beryllium, we've actually taken an atom that has perfectly filled orbitals and we screwed that up. We turned one of those orbitals into a half-filled orbital. It's actually not great. So when we think about it, this trend actually makes sense in terms of the electron configurations. Pulling this one lone random electron away creates a really great situation for the other electrons in the atom. And because of that, this trend that we see for going from beryllium to boron, it actually carries through. Um, when we go from magnesium to aluminum, or when we go from calcium to gallium, we see the exact same trend all the way down the periodic table. So this ionization energy is always, for all of these atoms, always higher than the ionization energy for all of these atoms. So that's our first exception. Let's take a look at our second exception. Our second exception is for nitrogen and oxygen. And let's go back to our periodic table again and see where they sit relative to each other. We'll use a different color this time. So here's nitrogen and here's oxygen. And again, our expectation is that as we go from left to right, ionization energy goes up. So our expectation is that oxygen will have a higher ionization energy than nitrogen. We're going to expect the ionization energy of nitrogen to be less than the ionization energy of oxygen. But since this is all about exceptions to the trend, you guys can probably guess that in actuality, the ionization energy of nitrogen is greater than that of oxygen. Again, we're going to use energy diagrams for our electrons to explain what's happening in this case. And we're going to go with 1s, 2s, and 2p uh, orbitals for nitrogen on the left. And then we'll do the same thing for oxygen on the right. 1s, 2s, and 2p. This will be for oxygen on the right. Let's go back to the periodic table and let's take a look at how many electrons we're working with. For nitrogen, we are working with seven electrons and oxygen is eight. Let's fill those electrons in for nitrogen first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Remember the rule that everybody half fills an orbital before we start doubling any of them up. For oxygen, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now again, what we're looking at here is removing one of the electrons from each of these atoms. So we want to ask ourselves which electron gets removed. The last electron that we drew in our diagram is the electron that we will end up removing. So I've highlighted those electrons. And again, let's just kind of visualize what would happen or what would it look like if we removed these electrons. So for nitrogen, we're in this situation where all of our orbitals are half filled or perfectly filled. 
And in removing that electron, we're going to create um, uh, just a randomish 2p orbital set of 2p orbitals where we don't have anything symmetrical about it at all. For oxygen, when we remove that highlighted electron, look at what we're about to do. We create a perfectly half-filled set of 2p orbitals. Let's put those electrons back. In this situation, our explanation for what we're observing is that when we remove this electron, we are creating, removing, creates, a perfectly half-filled 2p orbitals. Whereas over here, removing this electron disrupts our perfect half-filled 2p orbitals. And so because this has to do with the electron configuration and the half-filledness of these orbitals, we see that this trend, again, like, like with beryllium and boron, it continues as we go down the periodic table. So we have that exact same issue with all of the atoms in the same column. And again, we can say here that we have a higher ionization energy for the elements in group 5A than for the elements in group 6A.